Hi, welcome to Board Gems. This is my weekly video series in which I cover an older board game gem. I'm not doing that in this episode. Uh, I've started to, in between my regular episodes, do a couple of one-offs. And uh, the last couple and the next couple I'll be doing are mailbag episodes. It's been requested, so I'm giving them a try. Uh, I've got a lot of questions on Board Game Geek uh, from just people. People who have questions, that's what they do, they ask questions. And I asked for questions and I got them, and I got a lot. So, instead of just having one giant mailbag episode, I'm splitting them up into several smaller episodes based on topic. This episode is about my preferences, my gaming preferences. I think most of the questions are related to gaming. They're not gonna ask me, you know, like, you know, what's your favorite pop to drink? Which is Diet Pepsi. And who's your favorite Captain Kirk or Picard? Get those questions out of here. I don't I don't like those geeky questions. Anyway, so this episode is my preferences, my mostly gaming preferences. So I'm just gonna jump right in. I wanna keep the video kind of short, so less banter, less less set up more more questions. So let's get started. What is your favorite game? And what is your favorite genre of games? I usually say my favorite board game is Ave Caesar, or Ave Caesar, which is the very first board gem. I did that last year, and my favorite genre seems to be racing games. I don't, I never really thought that, but one time uh, there was a new member of the game group who joined, and in email or something, they asked, like, so what, what kind of games does everybody like? And then one person, I forget who, they replied as like, oh, this person likes this type of game, this person likes that type of game, and Daryl likes racing games. And I'm like, really? It's always interesting, isn't it, when you hear other people talk about you <laughs> and say what your preferences are. They might be wrong, but it says something about what you're projecting, right? Uh, so I do certainly own a lot of racing games. So uh, obviously, besides Ave Caesar, Ave Caesar. I have uh, Formula Day, including a whole bunch of tracks for it. I have Eagle Ergon, which I did a video of. I did Power Boats, which I did a video on. Power Ships, um, Jamaica, Snow Tails, uh, Bolide. That's a little bit of an obscure one now, I think. Uh, I have a bunch that I haven't played. For example, I have uh, Flamme Rouge and uh, and Chariots of Rome and a few others. Uh, I don't know if you count like horse racing games like Royal Turf slash Winter Circle, but um, I just seem to have a lot of racing games and I enjoy it. I I wonder if that says something about me because I don't really enjoy what are, what are sometimes called point salad games. Victory points, like I understand why they exist, but it is always nice when you have a goal that's not just victory points or the victory points map directly to something. You know, to have so many different ways of scoring points, you know, this one scores you three points, this one scores you two points over two rounds, and just just a mishmash, I don't enjoy those. So I like games that have a, a very clear goal. And of course, racing games do have a very clear goal. Favorite game mechanism. First, thanks for calling it a game mechanism. Um, I know the popular terminology is game mechanic, but that always just kind of bugs me the wrong way like I'm hiring somebody in overalls to come and fix my game for me. Game mechanism. Uh, I don't have a favorite game mechanism. Um, it's, I really enjoy a lot of different game mechanisms. It's, I don't care so much about any particular ingredient. I care about the whole dish. So I'll accept almost any mechanism if it's contained in a good game. But like in food, there are particular ingredients that I really dislike like onions. Ugh. It is a scientifically proven fact that onions are stupid and nobody should like them. So I hate any dish that has onions in it. And likewise, there are mechanisms that I can't stand. Uh, only one comes to mind, actually. And that is, you know, there are games, of course, where you're playing cards uh, in front of you, so you're forming a tableau. And, you know, you can interact with it. Maybe there's little spaces to put workers on or something, right? But you get your own cards in front of you. And the other players have their own cards in front of them. And, you know, in most games, 19 games out of 20, you don't really have to care very carefully about what cards are in front of another player. 
unless you super super care about doing well in the game and winning and you know, okay i i have to remember that the next player can activate that card and you know what at least i can ignore that and still play the game but there are games in which you have to care what's in front of other players um you know what those games are often these games with we each have our own tableau that's sometimes a little bit multiplayer solitaire or it can feel that way so one thing game designers sometimes do is have a way to interact like i can use your cards or you can use my cards i hate that game mechanism hate it hate it hate it now i have to care about what's in front of everybody else oh my god and i have to look across a table and look at a tiny print on the text and try to remember later on and if i don't remember i have to look again Oh, I hate that. Any any game with an auction, especially like a blind bid auction, in which you lose your bid, even if you don't win the auction. Oh, that should be banned from games. I'm dead serious. If you could co-design a game with anyone, who would it be and why? <laughs> I don't think I would be a very good game designer. I enjoy coming up with ideas, but I don't have the time or the patience probably to see them through to their conclusion. I like to do like a lot of play testing and iterations and tweaking. I'm not sure I would be good at that. But to answer your question, if I was to pick any game designer, I would probably pick my friend, Andre Philip, who is now a published game designer. Check out City Builder Ancient Rome, coming soon from Inside Up Games. I don't think that's kind of the answer you were looking for, right? You were saying, like, what game designer that other people might have heard of? <laughs> what famous game designer would you enjoy working with? Well, any of the patron saints of this video series, right? Reiner Knizia, Leo Colavini, Dirk Han, Mikhail Schacht. But, I mean, there's lots of other ones, too, right? Like, uh, I, I think it would be amazing to work with people like Mikhail Kiesling or Wolfgang Kramer or Inca and Marcus Brand, um, two... I'll say newer designers um, that I think make amazing games are Phil Walker Harding and Emerson Matsuuchi. I really enjoy the games that they've come out with and I would love to work with any of them. I think though, if I had to pick one, I might actually pick Bruno Faiduti for two reasons. One is he often works with other designers. So he's a very collaborative person. Uh, there are, of course, some designs that only he has worked on, but most, I would say most of his published designs are with another designer. So I think he's a very collaborative person. It would be really great to work with him and bounce ideas off him. And he likes Ave Caesar too. Um, but the other reason is that a lot of his games are very interactive, have a lot of uh, unexpected events happen, which uh, can throw a monkey wrench in people's plans. And that's a lot of fun. And I expect designing a game with him would also be quite fun. I'd be interested to hear what your favorite GMT game is. So GMT is a famous board game publisher that specializes in war games. And I am not much of a war gamer. I think like a lot of board game hobbyists, I've always like tried to, you know, just take baby steps and then, oh, maybe I would like it. I just need to try and find the right one, like find a nice light war game, right? Um, so I do experiment with GMT games a lot. Um, I've covered Maneuver on this channel, which is a great, great light war game, which is on their P500 pre-order system right now. And I've also backed on their pre-order system Rebel Fury, another light war game, but I haven't played it. I can't say it's my favorite, but I'm cautiously optimistic, as opposed to being recklessly pessimistic. Battle Line's a great game, but that's not really typical GMT. I love when GMT experiments with game designs that are not war games. Um, I really like to support GMT when I can, when they try these sorts of games. And so I actually believe I backed Thunder Alley on their P500, and I love Thunder Alley. That is a fantastic racing game. I didn't enjoy the sequel Grand Prix so much, but I love Thunder Alley. And as you can probably see, you might, I don't know if you can see it on my shelf, but in many of the videos you can see it. I have a large collection of Commands and Colors Napoleonics. Commands and Colors games are games that I've experimented with a lot. I used to have Battle Cry. I almost, I just recently sold it actually. I've tried Memoir, really disliked Commands and Colors Ancients. And I had heard that Napoleonics was almost like a, was more involved than Ancients. I liked Battle Cry, so I was very curious to try what is basically an advanced version of Battle Cry, and that's Napoleonics. 
I really love Napoleonics. It worked really well for my son and I, and uh, we play it a lot. And of course, I have a whole bunch of expansions for it. So even though Napoleonics, I guess, is one of the heavier Commands and Colors games, it's quite intuitive, unlike Ancients. Ancients, all the different unit types, I found dizzying, right? Like some units can move one space and then attack, some move one space and then they have to attack or something. If they're close to one space, then they, you know, they, they get enraged and they charge. And trying to remember all these different units who are identified on their sticker by a little like yellow triangle or something, it was just dizzying for me. And of course it was really bland board too. So for the longest time I thought, oh, I don't like Commands and Colors Ancient, so I, I don't want a block game. I don't, I don't want a Commands and Colors games with blocks. So I was really surprised. I just love Napoleonics. Um, it's it's really colorful, right? Like the, the the blocks and of course the board is a kind of grassy board. So it's really bright and colorful. And even though it's a bit of a longer game, it's I just feel it's really intuitive. I don't have nearly the problem with Napoleonics that I did with Ancients. I would say my favorite would be either Commands and Colors Napoleonics or Thunder Alley. Um, I can't really decide between the two. But I will say my son's favorite would definitely be Maneuver. We all know you love Hans and Gluck, but when and how did you come to prefer their games? And what was the first HIG game that made you say, damn, these pig riders really know what they're doing? <laughs> so, you know, sometimes game designs are great and they don't feel polished, so they needed more development. Sometimes a game design is great, but the publisher didn't do the design justice with the, the presentation. Um, I just find that with Hans and Gluck, you get the whole package, right? You get usually get, usually, very well-designed game, very nice presentation. Okay, it's not going to have, like, super amazing artwork necessarily, but extremely functional and pleasant to look at. Lovely wooden pieces. They really strike a nice balance, a lot of them have in the past, of being kind of next-step games, so you have games like, you know, Carcassonne and, and I guess, you know, Maori and, and Fjords and a, a number of their sort of light games. But a lot of the games that, that I fell in love with are not gateway games, but they'd be kind of a next step, really. So just, just throwing off the top of my head, you got Attica, you got Taluva, um, Hacienda, which has been suggested for the channel. I'll, I'll get to it sometime. You know, Turn and Taxes, Finca, Vikings, Oregon, which I've covered. These games are great. You know, Hans and Gluck has always done gamer games, right? I mean, they published Die Mocker back in the 90s. You know, and they have a lot of gamer games now. You know, I'm talking about games like uh, Russian Railroads, Voyages of Marco Polo. But it almost feels like that they've somewhat abandoned the style of game, which I fell in love with, to focus more on these kind of um, gamer games. Still love Hans and Gluck, and I'm still getting some of their older games um, that I've since gotten rid of, but I, I really want again. So I've picked up El Grande and Samurai, and I'm getting um, first edition Tigris and Euphrates uh, in the mail soon. So really excited about that. What is your ideal gaming situation slash setup? For example, cabin vacay with family friends, gaming with buddies slash strangers at a convention, four-player double date with another gaming couple and friends, you know, family game night, party game night with all your besties, overnight gaming marathon in your game dungeon slash rec room, or meetups, etc. I'm not really a convention guy, I'll say that up top. You know, it would be neat to go to a convention like BGG Con that has a massive library so I can play some, some older games, but most people just want to play the new stuff, and A, I... I'm not very good at, or I don't enjoy learning a game as it's being taught to me. For most people, like I teach games at the restaurant, right? For most people, that's ideal. Like, I don't want to read rules. I want, to, I want somebody to just tell me how to play. And I'm the opposite. You put a rule book in front of me, you know, I'm going to enjoy reading it. And, and I'm going to really take my time and internalize. But somebody's talking at me, you know, I'm going to forget half the stuff from the beginning you know, by the time they reach the end. And halfway through the game, I'm going to have no idea what's going on. It's my fault. But as a result, I don't like learning games at a convention. 
to answer your questions, uh, environment, you know, really a cabin sounds fantastic. Really anything with a view, a nature view would be great, but just, just have windows, you know, open, you know, against some trees or something, maybe some natural breeze coming in. Um, have some music on in the background. Uh, my preference would be maybe like some lo-fi chill hop, you know, just some kind of just easy beats just in the background. Opponents, definitely friends and family, preferably both. Although the gaming couple idea sounds great. I'm not sure I've ever played with another gaming couple. Um, but of course, so many games you could play with four players, right? Um, but, you know, my friends are an absolutely amazing group of people. And if I can get my my wife and son involved as well. Oh. Time frame, I, I, probably starting around lunchtime or a little bit earlier, so like 11 a.m. And then going until evening, maybe 9 or 10-ish. So like, yeah, you're talking about 10, 12 hours. Maybe taking a break for pizza, say, um, supper time. No overnight games for me. I'm old now. I'm not going to enjoy that. Do you have a list of regrets? Games that you chose to sell or trade away for whatever reason and later either reacquired or wished you hadn't parted with. You know, when I first got into the hobby, you know, I was limited by a shelf, right? And this was my shelf, this is my gaming shelf, and of course, you know, I'm filling up, I'm getting these great games, but I'm not playing them as fast as I'm acquiring them. Um, and at some point I realized, you know, I play this game or I, I, maybe I don't get a chance to play the game, but it's like, you know what, I got this game. I don't know why I did. This is really not, you know, I can't, I'm not going to find people to play this game with. And I traded it away and then later on I regretted it. So there's a number of games that I reacquired. Uh, like I mentioned Samurai and El Grande and uh, what else? What else have I reacquired? I've reacquired Hanzo, which I covered on the channel. Santiago, another one I covered. Age of Industry, that's an interesting one because I had that and I, because it, it sounded like, because people loved brass. I'm talking about old brass now, not the Roxley reprint. People loved brass, but it seemed a little intimidating to me. So I loved the idea of Age of Industry being kind of a more streamlined version of that game, but I couldn't get it played. I think it was going for a little bit expensive, like a little bit expensive. So I ended up selling or trading it away. Um, but then later on, I ended up reacquiring it. <laughs> and I'm not going to trade or sell it again until I have a chance to, to, to play it. Pillars of the Earth. Now that's an interesting one because, you know, that game, I would say, probably has definitely been fired by newer releases, I suppose. But it's still a good game, darn it. And I found a good deal for the base game and the expansion, which is crazy hard to find. I, I couldn't pass it up. So I have Pillars of the Earth. I do hope I can play it sometime. Uh, one game that I regret getting rid of that I have not reacquired, but I'd like to, is Kreta. Uh, that's a Stefan Dora game from Goldseeper. Um, I had that game for a long time, and I maybe played it once. Don't have any memory of the experience. But after sitting on my shelf for so long without getting played, I traded it or sold it away, and that one I regret. I would definitely pick that up again if I had a chance. And it's been suggested for the channel, so hopefully I can. Are there any Holy Grail board games that you wish you owned but haven't been willing or able to pull the trigger on? Or maybe games you passed on at the time and wish you had purchased instead? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I do regret not being part of the Tree Frog subscription service. You know, when Tree Frog started, uh, Martin Wallace was doing three games. I think it was three games a year, or three releases, and one was like a two-player game, and one was a three-player, specifically three-player game, and one was uh, like a multiplayer game. And some of those looked really interesting. And, you know, like, like Tinner's Trail, covered it on the channel, really liked Tinner's Trail. I have the JKLM edition, which is fine, and is bright and colorful, but... Like some of those, like the art on them, I, I love, what, is it Peter Dennis is his name? Peter Dennis is the one who does a lot of the art for um, for uh, Tree Frog games, for Martin Wallace games. I love his work and they add a real nice historical flavor. But, you know, some of these games like, uh, you know, Last Train to Wensleydale, uh, A Few Acres of Snow. Um, very curious about games like After the Flood. Like now my family is three players. I'd love to have some of these three player games. So I really wish I had kind of, yeah, 
gotten the Tree Frog subscription games as they were coming out. I do have Holy Grails. I don't really have a lot of things that I regret missing out on. Like Formula Day, I have a lot of tracks for Formula Day. and Some of them are quite valuable now. There are some that I don't have and will probably be way, way too expensive to get now. Certainly too expensive for the number of times I play Formula Day. But I have to remind myself, I already have a great collection. I don't really need more tracks for Formula Day. I would love to have the Gold Sieber edition of Big City. So Big City is, is, has been a little bit of a grail game for me. I do collect some Gold Sieber games in those giant boxes. And Big City is one I love to have. And when the Mercury games, I believe it was, when they put on Kickstarter this giant, you know, version of Big City, this reprint, and the, the miniatures are bigger and everything, I backed that. Still have it. I regret it. Anytime I buy a deluxe board game off of Kickstarter, I regret it. Some deluxe games I don't regret. I have a deluxe edition of Ticket to Ride, the, I guess it would have been the 15th anniversary edition. Love that. I have the 15th, no, it was 10th, I guess. Yeah, 10th anniversary of Ticket to Ride. Love that. I have the uh, 15th anniversary edition of Catan, which is wooden. Those weren't up on Kickstarter. But anytime I get a deluxe game on Kickstarter, I usually regret it. And that's the case with Big City. So I have Big City. And every time I try to get that played, it just, I was like, oh, it just feels too big and ostentatious and... Oh yeah, great table presence. If you if you want your table presence to tell other people, you waste too much money on things. <laughs> you you are not smart with your money. So actually, like I would love to have a Gold Sebrew or Rio Grande edition of Big City, and I would like to sell or trade my Mercury Games edition. And, and also I would love, 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 love to be able to collect Dice Tree games. Um, I love... I do love deluxe games, <laughs> as long as they're not giant boxes, right? And Dice Tree games are generally normal sized. So I have the Dice Tree edition of Winter Circle. I actually haven't opened it because I have Royal Turf. So I don't need to open Winter Circle because if I want to play, I can just play Royal Turf. Um, I know a friend who has the, the modern art, um, but I'm happy with my modern art, which is from Wink Games in this tiny, tiny little box. So, uh, but you know, Dice Tree makes some amazing looking games and and I would be happy to collect them but it would definitely be expensive to do so so anyway TLDR my holy grail might be might be a gold sea or Rio Grande edition of big city and they're out there they're on the marketplace I just haven't pulled the trigger can't it's hard to justify when I've got the nicer you know bigger version of it here well, that's about it for this episode. Uh, so these are these have all been questions about my gaming preferences. Uh, I do have similar questions, which are asking my opinions on things. And I split those up. So preferences are kind of nice and not controversial. The opinions one might get a little ranty. So we'll see. That'll be in a future episode. There'll also be episodes on Ludica and... My, this video series, my video series, I might combine those. I didn't get a huge number of questions for both of them, so I might combine that into one episode. But the opinions one, that'll probably be a, a little bit of a bigger one. Uh, if you have questions you'd like me to address, especially if it's on a topic that I haven't done yet, feel free to let me know. I promise I'll get to it in a future mailbag episode. Thanks for watching. Remember, good older games don't stop being good just because new games come out. Take care.